Cannabis Coffee Hour Hello. with your host, Hello. me, Rob Cantrell, Hello. coming to you live and direct from Brooklyn, New York with another episode, number one, I'm not sure, 133 possibly, should I get on the Google machine and check? Uh, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. I got a great, yeah, 133. I got a great episode. Uh, I got some great cannabis. I got some Jack Herrera, some Cherry Jack, finely ground cannabis. And then I also have some um, a wild pro- a product. I'm excited. I had one of these earlier. Um, but I didn't get to absorb it. I really want to absorb it on this. I have a great coffee drink from Intelligentsia. Uh, one of the higher end, you know, possibly snobby LA, but damn, they're good. And I dig their vibe and I dig their uh, art. And their product is usually good. And they have teamed up with Oak Oatly. I do like oat milk. I'm all about, I wasn't feeling oat milk at first. It took me a while to go through first i was rocking some first first i was what was it? almond milk right almond milk then cashew and then finally oat milk oat milk i'm stuck on i'm definitely make all my banana shakes in the morning with the oat milk i like to sometimes i'll switch back to the uh, cow titty milk <laughs> cow's got some big old mammy grams uh, oat spiced latte from Intelligentsia oat milk with notes of cinnamon, vanilla, ginger, and orange. Holy fucking schmackers. That's coming at you. And uh, I actually put this, they put it, they have it in the uh, cardboard. Um, on the cardboard, you know, it's like a box of water type joint. But it's just uh, Intelligentsia Spiced Latte Oat Milk. <laughs> uh, I had one the other day, and it, it tasted like a liquid um, oatmeal cookie, you know, with cinnamon, and maybe it had some coffee in it. But it does fit my vibe. I like cinnamon. I mean, chocolate chip cookies are the number one. I mean, that's dominant right there. They, they're the headliner. But a good, gooey, like... Oatmeal cookie uh, hits hits a certain spot. It's a warm spot. It's a friendly spot. It's not about capitalism. It's about survival and <laughs> and mom and cinnamon and uh, oh, you know, it's just like oatmeal. Oh, like it, oatmeal is good for you. Every, nobody ever bums out on somebody for eating too much oatmeal. And and if you have heart problems, they're all about oatmeal all day. Um, so. Oat milk all day. Uh, I dig it. I think it tastes good. It doesn't fill me up as much. Um, And it's creamy and it gets the job done. And the job is really just cutting my coffee so my stomach doesn't burn open. (laughs) And that's where cannabis comes along too and uh, helps out as well. But man, um, let's, let's, let's try some of this coffee. I'm going to pour it out. I got it over ice. I tried to be really fancy. Um, so I, we got the Intelligentsia. We're going to open up the bot. Oh, they said shake well. I even went to the website. Um, I like nerding out on this stuff. Uh, and that's what I love about this co- uh, co- cannabis coffee hour is I learn stuff and uh, about coffee and the new drinks. Because everywhere you turn, it's just like, New drinks and because uh, everybody's just tired of the same old bullshit evolution. All right, here we go. Inspired by our seasonal Havana latte served in coffee bars, we've rep- replicated their uh, this customer. We 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 recreated. Okay, I had some cannabis today. Re- <laughs> get off my back for reading out loud. We've recreated this customer favorite. 
made with oatly oat milk. Our oat spice latte is a sant is accented with flavors of cinnamon, vanilla, ginger, and orange. Oh, I already said that. That's on the box. So uh, yeah, let's check this out. Um, which is crazy. I love this stuff. Today, I actually got a free, they were giving away free Monster Java. I, I took pictures of it. I couldn't drink it, dude. I think that would have killed me. The Monster Java, I, I mean, I got I got a picture of it. I, I actually put it, I think I, I gave it away. I didn't even give it away. I don't, yeah, I don't know about that Monster drink. It's just, I guess it's just energy drinks. But I know they sponsor people, so I shouldn't talk too much shit. Um, maybe they'll get in the weed world, but I think they're made by Coca-Cola. I think monster energy is okay. Spice latte over ice intelligentsia. I'm just getting the last kernels. That's the real spice. That's the, oh yeah, that's the, that's the elf magic right there. Let's see here. Spiced. All right. Oh yeah, that's spicy. But damn, that's good. It's very milky. And it's but it's over ice and I had a ton of coffee today. I I went through pretty much French press. Did I drink a, I've been going through like a French press and then having to and then that's done by 10 by 12:30 and then I always get some other but sometimes if I go too strong of if I get a cold brew like some of these places make just evil ass like it will light you up. And I do like it. Um, it kind of evens everything out. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's good. Try it. Intelligentsia Oat Spiced Latte. It's over ice. This is a, you know, this is a good afternoon. I don't know. Yeah, morning would be good. It's a lot to be going on in the morning. I think in the afternoon cold drink, it's just perfect. Uh, perfect for this podcast. And here's a little Jack Herrera. Now, this is a sativa. And that might be why I'm all over the map, because I had a little bit before. Um, but I checked out Leafly. Like, uh, I got this cherry Jack. It's just red hairs everywhere. That's just, you just, you just know it's great. Um, and that comes from this haze. I was talking to Hayes is like this super sativa. It'll, you know, you can write some definitely some great poetry and songs and music on it. I have been really creative. I'm getting done. I'm pushing this music project forward. I'm getting some final mixes done. Everything I'm getting better at. I was talking to my buddy uh is like I'm editing I'm editing this podcast with with GarageBand and Zoom and shooting it and then editing in Final Cut Pro. So I'm learning all this stuff and I pretty have a pretty much good to basic, good basic level on uh, these tools and I can use them and crank them out. And uh, this audio setup, I dig. I can jump on here and knock out uh, a Funky Fresh podcast and try out some Jack Herrera. Uh, so please... Like and subscribe to the Cannabis Coffee Hour right now if you're on Spotify. Uh, put it on your playlist. Send it to your friend. Tell everybody. I don't know. Nah, I don't know. I I try to always try to figure out how salesy <laughs> you should be. But you need to be a little bit, but you can't. Because I've met some artists that have been like, you know, so non-salesy that they can't even get off the ground. But then you meet some people that all they do is sell bullshit all day. And you're like, motherfucker, do you have any artistic integrity at all? Uh, but it's all a balance and it's all what we're working on. I've been meditating a ton. <clears throat> a ton. I need to do one thing at a time. So that's what I was racing around. But I need to sample... This is the cannabis coffee hour, so I need to talk about this cannabis that I just had. This is uh, the Cherry Jack, and uh, I would definitely, it is a sativa. It will get you up and running. 
Jack Herrera is a sativa-dominant cannabis strain that has gained as much renown as his namesake as the marijuana activist, author of The Emperor Wears No Clothes. Combining a haze hybrid with Northern Lights 5 and Shiva Skunk Cross, Sensi Seeds created Jack Herrera. Hoping to capture both a cerebral elevation and a heavy resin production. Oh, wow. Its rich genetic background gives rise to several different variations of Jack Herrera. Yeah, I've had this. It's great. It's a sativa hybrid. It's bliffs. This is a little too, or maybe Jack Herrera was created in the Netherlands in the mid 90s, where it was later distributed by. Dutch pharmacies as a recognized medical grain strain. Wow. So, he, yeah, this guy, he owned a uh, head shop and he wrote a book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. And I've met him. I mean, I shouldn't say this guy. I mean, The Emperor Wears No Clothes is like one of the more prolific um, early cannab- pro-cannabis uh, books, literature that is so let's read a little bit on that jack career some times called the emperor of hemp was an american cannabis rights activist and author of the Amer- uh, emperor wears no clothes a book yeah i met him i met him it's not about me but he's a brilliant dude and he's a kind guy and he was all about cannabis and legalizing cannabis and he was definitely pro hemp and about uh it saving i should read this i should you know, Jack Herrera, June 18th, 1939 to April 15, 2010. So I met him like 2007. Um, the American cannabis rights activist and author of The Emperor Wears No Clothes, a book in 19, and like in 1920. It was oh wow he had it. It was in print for thirty five years. Frequently cited as the efforts to decriminalize and legalize cannabis and expand the use of hemp for industrial use. That's the most important thing. Um, not the most important thing. I mean, cannabis is great for a lot of things. You know, it. it I have to say thank you to cannabis. You know. Um, it really has <laughs> helped me survive like 20 years in, in doing comedy and even before then, you know, as a as a teenager and uh, as a young man, um, you know, it just always there. I don't know. I think I just leaned on it to get by some of the, you know, trials and tri- tribulations. Uh, some people don't need it, but uh, I mean, I don't know in terms of sleep. It's always helped me sleep because I, I think I was always nervous. And then when I started doing comedy, it's just such a fucking hard pro- concept to it's like, I'm going to try to do this for a living like that thing. That's a hard fucking thing. And and I think I just numbed it down with a lot of cannabis, like a lot of that fear. And it worked. <laughs> it's not over. <clears throat> I have a lot to do. You know, I have this stand-up album, uh, Pure Uncut Joy, that's out. It's been three years. I recorded it at the um, Pete's Candy Store in Williamsburg, which is a great spot. If you're ever in Brooklyn, anybody, check out Pete's Candy Store if you just need a beer or something. Um, the vibe there is just perfect. I don't want to ruin it, I, but I know my numbers. Uh, you know, I got good numbers. I got a good crew. My fan base is awesome. Thank you for listening to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Um, but yeah, this they got a great backyard. It's just all wood. And it was a great place to record. And they've been doing a, a lot of epic music is going on over there. You know, I'm not that well versed on like the current independent music scene. But I know it's always going on. Scenes are always going on. You know, art is always going on. It comes from stillness. And stillness always happens, you know. It happens when people look away. <laughs> it's like the universe is always giving a look away uh, pass to you. And you have to not 
you can't foreshadow it, you know? You can't foreshadow it. And that's what I've been trying to do is just be quiet and be present. You know, I think everybody's talking all these buzzwords and, you know, Zen philosophy. And I try not to, you can't wear that shit like a jacket. And I think the same thing as religion, you know, is when you kind of put the shit on and you're like, look at me, I'm all in the mode, <laughs> you know, I'm all godded up, uh, which is cool. But the real one is just letting it all happen and it unfold and happen and be in wonderment of it. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the thoughts and the ego out of the way of the really big game and the big picture that's playing out which is much bigger than me, and it's just nature, you know? That's why I love hiking and getting back to nature, and I've been working in this backyard, and I've been handling handling a lot of dead leaves. <laughs> well, I've been doing a lot of, like, you know, editing and podcasting and writing and recording. I'm doing some tracks, yo. I'm doing some new music. Um, but all that stuff is, you know, computer-based type shit, you know? When you get out into the real world... When I see nature, you know, that's, I love, I don't know. I don't, is it me or is it you? Is it all of us? Is it my age? But I really love plants. I love seeing nature. I think grow houses are amazing. I couldn't even imagine. I can't wait to take this. I just see, I, I, this podcast has sky's the limit, man. I have been doing this out of my apartment, you know, and COVID really has, you know, been locked down. I've been just Seattled out, you know, I've been down in the basement just uh, making beats and podcasts. Uh, but now it seems like the world is opening up. Like I've been doing some stand-up shows and, um, you know, some people are wearing masks. Some people aren't. I'm vaxxed up. People are, a lot of people are vaxxed up. Um, but I don't want to talk about that too much. I want to talk about um, this great cup of coffee. Shout out to Intelligentsia. You know, Intelligentsia, you, you, they have these wings on there. They have great font. Um, I think it's an L.A.-based coffee shop. You know, they're just trying to, you know, elevate the shit. Because the opposite is Monster Java. Now, they gave me a free one, man. Now, this thing cost me $5. This co- this intelligence, but it does taste good. A lot of the pre-packaged, like, pre-made iced coffee, go-to-the-store-bought type shit is kind of whack. Like, I went through a fave phase was when i was feeling some of those brands are good but some of them just taste awful but this one is really good and i do think it's the cinnamon and actually they're the oat milk you know because you're not getting like when they try to do the iced coffee just like black and they try to package it like mask I don't know. It, it just doesn't taste right. There's something weird about it, and it and it makes you shit weird. <laughs> but this doesn't. This is a very good Intelligentsia oat spiced latte in the house, and some Cherry Jack, uh, knocking it out, um, having fun. Yeah, I've been uh, meditating and breathing. That's the thing. Is uh. The thing I kind of got together is posture and breath and not even the mind. You know, you can do the mantra thing. You know, I do the mantra thing or I have a couple things like I am this, this is me. And you're supposed to do that like I'm successful or I'm a good this or I'm making, you know, whatever you want, you can program your brain. But then there's the other part. And that's supposed to like align you. Then that's the other part where you just prac, you know, focus on your breath. And that took a long time to understand why. And here's where I get why now. It's aligning your mind and your body. So you're actually training your mind to the most minute thing, which is breathing, which is almost automatic all the time. But by focusing on that your attention on that your body and mind lines up and that's why stretching and sports and being active is good because 
you get out of ego think phase, you know, like this is me and where am I going and what does it all mean? Whereas really you're just as important as that plant or that <laughs> dog or the that other person. Everybody's like on the equal plane of just nowness, you know? My new thing is like working the space. Like we get this space and we just get to, you just always, you know, you're if you have a room, you're always re-cleaning it and setting it up a certain way or you're, you're doing your comedy act or your pot, you know, it's just like you're always working it and making it a little bit better. And, um, but also with meditation, you learn to like step back, let it play out, let things settle, um, Less is more. But uh, yeah, this coffee's great. I've been doing. I get my knees tricky a little bit. I've been. I was loading some speakers. I'm doing a. Doing some. Uh, work helping out some friends and my knee's a little bit tricky and I've been doing my five Tibetan rites these crazy stretches and I've been meditating like a motherfucker but yeah that's in meditating I was just been lining up my butt and that's been helping me on stage so I've been taking that I've been doing two I did the comic strip I did a set at the comic strip shout out to the comic strip my man uh JR is still working there and Tommy uh those old cats, not old cats, but yeah, it's just one of the oldest comedy clubs in New York City. I went to Manhattan on a subway from, and this is like way up on the Upper East Side, so it's a long subway, but I've, the queue is like direct, so it just goes whap. It doesn't go whap. It takes like maybe seven stops, but it's a far ass reach. So it worked out and uh, I went up there and I did like a 10 minute set. Not many people, nobody was wearing masks. I didn't see anybody weren't really wearing masks. I wore a mask coming in. No, I saw some people wearing masks. I saw some people wearing masks. Everybody's kind of wears masks. Like going inside to places, I see people wearing masks, but I also see people not. Um, I don't know why I kind of just got back on that COVID type shit. I don't even want to talk about it. I want to talk about how delicious this Oatly coffee is. <laughs> uh we, I am like, so I'm getting out there and I'm doing shows and it feels good. And I hope to take it out. Like I do have this comedy festival booked. I have been going out for some commercial auditions. I've been doing some auditioning. Which has been, uh, I'm just figuring it all out. I haven't gotten it. Uh, I'm just figuring out how to tape, how to present. A lot of that stuff, you ne you're always kind of tweaking it and tweaking it, and then it you get it to a place where it's good for you, you know? That's where I, I'm kind of learning, is just like, man, fuck everybody else. I'm just need not in a good way, but I just got to figure out how, what works for me. And that's what cannabis kind of teaches you, is like, yeah, it's not always for everybody else, but for me, sometimes it's uh, something that, you know, brings a great amount of joy especially when i'm doing creative stuff i've been trying to sit down and watch television but i really want to create media and not <laughs> absorb it uh because there's so much youtube there's so much media that i'm almost like oh i gotta step back a little bit um like last night i tried to watch the he-man documentary on netflix and that thing was like pretty much like a couple sales dudes stealing ideas and m mashing them together. And then, well, I mean, everything. I can't say. I never was a He-Man dude. I liked Thundar the Barbarian. The Thundar the Barbarian was, like, right before He-Man. And he was a little bit, ra I, it was just a little bit cooler. But He-Man blew up, and it was all about the toys. So it that was the thing about He-Man. It started, like, mostly a great art piece like a great cartoon or a great movie inspired the toy this was the exact opposite like they lost a pitch for conan or star wars or something 
and they had all these fake models already made and they just like switched it up and rolled out this like toy and then built a cartoon around it because they had to storyboard everything so they just with I mean it's kind of genius I mean some some of the artwork I will say Skeletor was kind of dope looking and he man was kind of dope I hate I, I and you know I have the power that that you know that was pretty sweet but it is all about power and control which is odd um which is what everybody wants but really it's about um the wonderment that's what i've been doing is just like trying to step back and be like wow isn't this a trip because everything does seem so brand new to me like i don't know with the memory thing like are we supposed to remember every fucking thing <laughs> you know i i just think that you just need to we're not even living in the moment even further and further and that's where i'm trying to get to and I do find with meditation and uh, practicing breath and working on my posture, I was, I read something about neurosis and posture. Like, I really think that some of that shit in your head is like even, you know, standing or how you tilt your head, you know, and you can rest it, you know, there's like that, you know, how that's what I've been do, trying to sit properly without something on my back and meditate for 20 minutes. I usually have like a pillow on my back. So now I'm trying to like free dog it, which is like you have to keep your spine and your head completely erect, like almost balancing on top of each other and uh, do that for 20 minutes. It takes focus. So you're focusing on that the whole time and not thinking all about all about the crazy bullshit that's swimming in our head because, you know, the crazy bullshit I think was great. I mean, I think it was manageable, but once YouTube and algorithms and uh, all that and the and, and the automatic access to all this stuff, I think yeah, that's the other thing. You have to be very careful about what kind of media you absorb. Um, same as food, same as people, same as air, um, same as drinks. But I will say this intelligentsia oatly spiced latte is a uh, pretty cool it's great tasting the sun is just getting out it's just getting like we've had like two perfect days and so everybody's in a really good mood and the numbers are going down so I'm looking forward to traveling and booking some shows. I know I could book some shows. I just need to book like a simple tour. Give me a shout out if you live in a stony town and you want me to come to town. I got cool openers. I got people. Um, I would love to do this podcast uh, out on the road a little bit more. Um, I was just checking if we got any more. Herbo. Um Oh, there's. I wanted a little bit more of the Jack Herrera. It's just one of those days. Yeah, the. I have been kind of. I you've been using the 420 formula to clean out my uh, pipes, and I haven't been running it down the drain. I just keep the bag and I throw it out. But I don't know how good that is for the environment. Um. So, but I know for Formula 420 has an environmentally friendly one. So, if there, I met the owner one time years ago at High Times, but it's such a big product now. I think he, that dude like lives on a yacht, but now I think he sold that, sold the company to Shark Tank or something. Um, and it went huge. Uh, what kind of tunes have I been pumping? Been listening to a lot of Sublime. I don't know what it is. As soon as you want to, st as soon as Sandal Weather comes, you start listening to some, some Sublime. Um, it's just great summertime music. It's the '90s Beach Boys, uh, and he. It was more early. To, no, it was '90s. It was '90s. Now that I think about it, it's crazy that it's 2021. Like, what is that all about? Because we didn't even experience 2020 
because we were so corona out now it's like we're in this crazy future zone which is wild um and cannabis is coming like fully legal like that's what's crazy about it you know environmentally i think i don't know everything just to me i just think the way we even look at being a human being is changing like the way we even interact the even i mean that's what i'm on that's what i'm trying to figure out is like why do we eat so much or why do we have this need why is everybody complaining why you know or it seems like they're complaining but what i find it's mostly my my controlling of the dial of what i absorb and what i tend to think about or t- tend to you know bring in you know uh i do think just where your head's at is kind of sets you up where you want to be and you got to build on today you got to build on this moment uh, and at this moment i have my little small grinder i've had this grinder it's like literally a quarter a size of a quarter but i love it you know and it's not even great but i just always put just enough in there and it grinds it just right and then i just have finely burnable cannabis i i smoke some non ground up bud and it just it doesn't it doesn't burn right i mean it burns okay but you know over the years i will say i did have a pipe jack career started as a person that started in glass and then he ended up so big that he had his i mean the government put out his weed in amsterdam he was i mean i think that strain and even his celebrity that's when i met him was in amsterdam backstage i met jack Herrera, and then i met david peel i played with and he was like john lennon's dude and then the other heavy cat was um sinclair uh that guy just sinclair that john lennon did a concert for like got busted for these joints but he's a but then he also like managed managed the mc5 i think his name is john sinclair and um major 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 historic uh american historic cannabis activist and freedom fund let me see john um but i've met him at the same time yeah poet yeah this guy's heavy um but he was he was <laughs> he was a tough motherfucker when i met him um you know just you know kind of just been around the block um and that, yeah those guys were like all from the old school and great you know big time um yeah, John Sinclair is a trip. John Sinclair is an American poet, writer, political activist from Flint, Michigan. Sinclair defining style is jazz poetry, and he has re- released most of his work in audio formats. Okay, as an emerging young poet in the mid 60s, Sinclair took the role as manager of the Detroit rock band MC5, the band politically charged music and its yippie core audience devote, dovetailed with Sinclair's own radical development. In 1968, while still working with the band, he conspired... Oh, yeah, he, he was with the Black Panthers. Like, all those guys in Detroit in the 60s was, like, this heavy political thing. And this it's also spawned the major cannabis mo- movement because, yeah, Detroit... Uh, Michigan always had a weird weed thing going on and it goes with music and jazz and uh, farms. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, he was just a, you know, uh, a beatnik, you know, just a beatnik hipster of the early 60s, late 60s, mid 60s of Detroit, of that era. And then he went on to, like, manage the cool rock band in town, and they hung out with the Black Panthers. Um, but he also has, a like, an online show. I should try to get him on the show. Um, he, that would be amazing. Um, I'm going to reach out to some of these guys. But I also love doing um, solo ones. I don't ever want to be tied to guests, and I don't want to do it just to do it. You know, I want to do it because I want to do it. 
And I did see this oat spiced latte from Intelligentsia, and I was like, yeah, I got to get that shit. Smoke some weed and talk about it. Oatmeal. I was trying to think. I guess oat is just like a grass. Like it's like long grass and it has like a bud at the end. And that's the oat. I will just eat like raw, raw oatmeal like sometimes. But you put some cinnamon. It's kind of like a base thing. It's almost like bread. It's kind of base. It's kind of the space that you spice it up, you know. Everything is space, you know. Everything is nothing. We get to play with this space. We get to play with this nothing. You know? It's so nothing that it's us, that we're people. <laughs> and we get to play with this nothing. And then we come back to nothing. Then we come back out and it goes around and around. And it's really just light being reflected. Um... Did that go too far? I've been trying to bring it down to just base. Like, that's why the breath is so good because you can bring it into the one and you can just bring it into the moment. Because I could talk. That's the thing about talking spiritual stuff or, you, you know, the minute you do it, it ruins it. It's the same thing with comedy. The minute you start talking about comedy, it stops being funny. <laughs> and, the, and the minute... In the minute you talk religiously or spiritually, you stop being religious because you're not in that, you're not in that sacred moment. And that sacred moment is, you know, that's the, that's the magic. That's the wounds all the cha cha cha. You know what I'm talking about? Um, no, it's just life and just experiencing it and having fun with it. Yeah, I've been stretching, but I also got my my push up uh uh things out. What are those push up bars? I haven't done them, but I got them out. <laughs> That's my step. It might take me a couple of days, but as I get older, I look around and like, man, it's such a blessing to have this many days to learn this much shit. Because <clears throat> I've learned shit. I don't know everything. But I've learned shit because I've lived long enough and I've seen things play out. Everything plays out. Something grows and grows and maxes, goes to the max and then goes down and then comes back up again. And the best thing you can do is, uh, is just enjoy it. You try to. And now I'm trying to, you know, just focus on that moment you know or the moment that's why you always hear that ding like in buddhist stuff or whatever it's like pinpointing and i think music's that way it's like i don't know imprinting a moment in time and it brings you back to a familiar space that you feel your genuine self and that's i mean that's why i did comedy that's why I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be my genuine self. And I, even when I'm making money and even when I'm interacting with commercial outdoor lifestyles, I wanted to be my genuine self. And you can do that, but it's fucking hard. What I learned, it, it was hard. <laughs> but it isn't. But I made it hard. A lot of times I think that's when the ego steps in is when you start talking your sad story or, you know, woe is me because somebody's going on a ventilator right now you know it's like sh man somebody's getting shot in the head shit goes down um so you know nothing to really to complain or celebrate about you know that's when you get to that point in meditation it's like you accept them both and you just accept of what it is it's not things aren't good or bad or this or that it just is <laughs> it doesn't matter your opinion really doesn't matter what it is. It is. Get what I'm putting down, bruh? I don't know. Maybe it's this cherry jack. It is really heady, heady weed. Like, um, I do feel like I could crank out a script 
this weekend. If somebody gave me this, and I, I would, I do like being alone, and I haven't had that. With the quarantine, you would think you would have that, but you don't really have that all the way. Like, I need to be alone, alone, like, like a couple days, three or four days. You need one day to, to like to catch up. Then you just need a couple days just to do the work in terms of writing. Because I do feel, I feel there's you know stuff. There's a lot of work to be done. That's why I don't like sitting down and watching media. I want to create some media. And going out and performing, performing has been, every time I've stepped on stage, it's just been pure joy. I know everybody's sick of hearing uh, positive shit, or maybe they're not, now I don't think they are, um, but man, it's been fun every time I've gone on stage. And I'm not re- it's been so fun that I'm not that stressed, but I also know comedy is so fucking hard that I should give myself a little bit of stress, but... I just want to pick and choose what I do a little bit more and not, not just, just not just run the fucking thing to run the thing. Um, does that make any sense? Uh, but also you got to keep your head down cause, cause everything's changing so fast. You don't know where and how money is going to involve or how to get, but it's ch- people are making money that didn't think they were making money. And then it's all moving different. And exciting. So I'm just trying to sit back and watch it all. And I love it. I'm drinking oak spice lattes and um, having some cherry jack and, and doing a podcast. You know, I got basketball shorts and uh, tie dye on them right now. I mean, this is the office, yo. And I love it. And I love that you guys are listening. Um, Oh, yeah, the breath. That's what I was... Because I was just looking at this plant, and they were talking about... That plant has the same consciousness that you do. It is what it is, you know? Uh, And uh, it doesn't matter what it thinks of you. (laughs) You know, you should think of that... You should really think about, like, you shouldn't care what anybody thinks. I do believe nonconformity is such a beautiful thing, because all the rules should be broken... But it just matters when and where and how and when. And if you're the person to do it. Um, I think with cannabis, you know, as we go legal until they go, you know, national, federal or whatever, it's like, you know, we're still, we're still, you know, pressing on in terms of with like John Sinclair and uh, Jack Herrera. Uh, hemp hemp hooray that was the the chant hemp hemp hooray uh and thank god i i I want more hemp clothing um i like good t-shirts i like nice fabric um i don't have a lot but when i choose to now i've gotten so picky like i'm like okay i like how this fits i like how soft it is like we really are in terms of selection it's so infinite these days you know I just think everything, I don't know, some portal got open, some access to something has made things really sweet. <laughs> it's always been sweet, but I just love that cannabis is getting legal and coffee is getting everywhere. But I don't know, it is weird that I'm buying a box of oat milk coffee for $5 when you used to go to the diner. And really, what I even remember diner coffees. I can't wait to start eating in diners again. That's the one thing that's cool about New York. And there's all these classic stuff, man. Classic stuff is good. New stuff is good. Um, I've talked about that 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 art, wabi sabi, or what is it? It's it's an Asian art, but it's like where an, an old thing is fit with a new thing, and they kind of fit together. You know, it's like you know a rebuilt old Bronco or, you know, there's all kinds of stuff or I shattered a pot. Like I dropped a pot and then I glued it and it looks cool now because it has this scar. Um, imperfections sometimes is beautiful. And then with, with nature, nature doesn't give a fuck if it's perfect or not. It just keeps on going. Um, and we're going to keep on going. Going and going, not with this podcast. I'm going to wrap it up 
pretty quick here. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys listening, and it's been a nice cup of coffee. It's been a nice spliff, and I hope you have a nice day, and I hope you have a nice afternoon. Good vibes to the universe and you. Uh, rock on. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Grateful Dead. What else? That's been kind of chill. Um, some lettuce. Um, some um, John Russo. I bet I love watching stuff on YouTube. Music on YouTube is great, man. Uh, I, I want to do a cannabis coffee hour and have a, a musical guest and have it live streamed and have some good cannabis and coffee. We're all built. I mean, it's building that. That's where I want it to go. Don't steal my idea. Uh, but it's a simple idea. All my ideas are, I try to keep things simple um, and simple and fresh. And that's where we're at. We're at 45 minutes of me talking and sampling good coffee. Smoking a little herb out. And uh, I just want to give you a good sign off, a good peace out. Peace, love. Peace. That's what you want to get to. It's like you want to do your thing, but you're also looking, doing your thing. You want to just get to the other side. Be like, you know, inhale, exhale. It all comes back to the breath. Or, you know, you know fire up a big fat bowl. You can do the same. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll catch up with you next time. Shout out to Intelligentsia. Shout out to Jack Herrera. Shout out to uh, John Sinclair. Shout out to all the uh, cannabis activists. Shout out to all the coffee consumers. 